The only thing more hilarious than a Muslim apologist telling us that the Quran has been perfectly preserved is the same Muslim apologist quoting a missing Quran verse, but not realizing that it was once a Quran verse. Take Ali Dawa's nemesis, Sajid Lipham. In a recent video, Sajid shared a powerful message with his fans, a message about ingratitude and pointless competition. Not only does so much of social media provoke ingratitude, but it also keeps people competing in a game that they will never win. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said that if the son of Adam had a valley full of gold, then he would want two valleys, for nothing fills his mouth except dust of the grave, and Allah forgives him who repents to him. So you see brothers and sisters, when we chase this dunya, when we chase the life of this world, we'll never be fully satisfied. Good quote, Sajid. But in case I'm on Jeopardy one day and I need to know who said it, could you give that source again? The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said that One more time. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him That's strange. Sajid attributes this quote to Muhammad when it's actually from the Quran. Not the Quran we have today, mind you. I'm talking about the Quran during the time of Muhammad. You know, that jumbled mess of ever-changing verses that Muslims couldn't always remember? Time for a little investigation. Sahih Muslim 2286 Abu Harp bin Abu al-Aswad reported on the authority of his father that Abu Musa al-Ashari sent for the reciters of Basra. They came to him and they were 300 in number. They recited the Quran and he said, you are the best among the inhabitants of Basra, for you are the reciters among them. So continue to recite it. But bear in mind that your reciting for a long time may not harden your hearts, as were hardened the hearts of those before you. We used to recite a surah which resembled in length and severity to Surah Barat. That's Surah 9. I have, however, forgotten it, with the exception of this which I remember out of it, if there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. Notice, this is Muhammad's companion, Abu Musa, talking to the Quran reciters of Basra. He's talking to the next generation of Muslims years after Muhammad died. He tells them not to harden their hearts, like the first generation of Muslims hardened their hearts and forgot a surah, that was about the same length as Surah 9. Surah 9 has 129 verses, but Abu Musa only remembers one verse from it. If there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. This is a little different from Sajid's version. Abu Musa's version says that if there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, while Sajid's version says that if the son of Adam had a valley full of gold, he would like to have two valleys. Well, which version is correct? Let's go to Abu Ubaid's Kitab Fada'al al-Quran. Abdullah bin Saleh related to us from al Layth, from Hashim bin Saad, from Zayd bin Aslam, from Ada bin Yasser, from Abu Waqid al Laythi, who said, When the Apostle of Allah had a revelation, we would come to him and he would repeat to us what had been revealed to him. So, this is something about divine revelation. One day I came to him and he said, Allah, blessed and exalted be he, says. Notice, that it's Allah who says this, and what does Allah say? We have sent down wealth for the performance of prayer and the giving of alms, but if the son of Adam had a valley full of wealth, he would want a second, and if he had a second, he would want to add a third to them. Nothing indeed will really fill man's belly save the dust, and Allah turns to whom he wills. This version is different from the one Sajid quotes and from Abu Musa's version. Sajid's version says, if the son of Adam had a valley full of gold, he would like to have two valleys. Abu Musa's version says, if there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley. And Abu Waqid al Laythi's version says, if the son of Adam had a valley full of wealth, he would want a second, and if he had a second, he would want to add a third to them. So, 
This was recited as part of one of the longest chapters of the Quran. The entire chapter has been lost, except for this verse, which a bunch of people remember, but they can't agree on what it actually said. The different versions all have the same basic meaning, but Muhammad's companions definitely didn't have perfect memories. Let's continue. Hajjaj related to us from Hamid bin Salama, from Ali bin Zayd bin Jadan, from Abu Harb bin Abil Aswad, from Abu Musa al-Ashari, so we're back to Abu Musa, who said, There was revealed a surah about the size of al-Barah, surah 9, which was later withdrawn, of which I remember the words, Allah will help along this religion by means of a people for whom is no portion. Had the son of Adam two valleys full of gold, he would yearn for a third. Nothing will really fill man's belly but the dust, and Allah turns to whom he will. Notice two things here. One, in Sahih Muslim, Abu Musa says that Muslims forgot this surah, more than a hundred verses, because they hardened their hearts. They just got sick of reciting it. Here he says that it was revealed, but it was later withdrawn, i.e. abrogated. Why the different explanations? Well, according to Muhammad, if Muslims forget a passage of the Quran, it's because Allah made them forget it because he wanted to get rid of it. As we read in Surah 2, verse 106, Whatever communications we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring one better than it or like it. Do you not know that Allah has power over all things? So, Muhammad delivers a verse of the Quran. If everyone forgets it, Muhammad says that it's because Allah made them forget it. Pretty convenient. Two, look at how this missing verse begins, according to Muhammad's companion Abu Musa. Allah will help along this religion by means of a people for whom is no portion. But according to Muhammad's companion Abu Waqid al-Laythi, the missing verse begins, We have sent down wealth for the performance of prayer and the giving of alms. Totally different. I thought Muhammad's companions had amazing memories and that human memory is a perfect way to preserve an entire book. They can't even get a single verse right. But there's more. Abu Nuaym related to me from Yusuf bin Shu'ayb, from Habib bin Yasser, from Zayd bin Arkham, who said, We used to recite in the time of the Prophet, had the son of Adam two valleys of gold, he would desire a third. Nothing will really fill man's belly but the dust, and Allah turns to whom he wills. This is similar to Abu Musa's version. Hajjaj related to us from Ibn Jarej, who said, Abu Zubair informed me that he heard Jabir bin Abdullah say, We used to recite, Had the son of Adam a valley full of treasure, he would want another like it. Nothing will really fill man's belly save the dust, and Allah turns to whom he wills. This is similar to Sajid's version. And finally we have Hajjaj related to us from Ibn Jarej, who said, Ada informed me, saying, I heard Ibn Abbas say, I heard the Apostle of Allah say the like of this, but I do not know whether it is Quran or not. Isn't that interesting? We have multiple companions of Muhammad saying that this was a verse of the Quran. We even have Abu Musa saying that it was from a lost surah that contained well over a hundred verses. But Muhammad's companion Ibn Abbas says that he doesn't know whether that verse was part of the Quran or not. This means that Muhammad's companions themselves weren't always sure whether something was part of the Quran or not. Isn't this strange? Muslims today tell us that Allah has a unique style that can't be imitated by anyone. If Allah has a unique style that can't be imitated by anyone, then surely you could quote a verse from Allah to one of Muhammad's companions and he would be able to instantly tell you, based on style alone, whether it was from Allah or not. And yet, Ibn Abbas couldn't tell the difference between something that's revealed by Allah and something that isn't. Multiple companions of Muhammad identify this verse as part of the Quran. Sajid says 
that it was merely a valuable teaching of Muhammad. Now, this is just one verse, one example of how incredibly sloppy the process of preserving the Quran was in the early stages of Islam. The situation got so bad that years after Muhammad died, Caliph Uthman was worried that Muslims would start fighting over their different versions of the Quran. So he ordered everyone to hand over their copies of the Quran, anything that had verses of the Quran written on it. And he burned it all so that he could propagate a standardized version of the Quran. Here we are nearly 14 centuries later, and Muslim apologists can't stop telling us about the perfect preservation of the Quran, the miraculous preservation of the Quran. Given what the Muslim sources say about lost chapters, lost passages, missing verses, the burning of manuscripts, and so on, how can we not view Muslim apologists as complete, utter, total liars? One final point for everyone to think about, especially our Muslim friends. I understand the idea of abrogation. It usually doesn't make sense when we look at specific examples of abrogation, but I don't have a problem with the idea of Allah giving a command and then later abrogating that command and giving a different command. Anyone who has kids can understand this. I have a three-year-old. He's not allowed to go outside without someone to watch him. A few years from now, he will be allowed to go outside without someone to watch him, but he'll need to be home by a certain time. A few years after that, the time he needs to be home by will change. Eventually, he'll be an adult and he won't have to listen to me about going out. So I get the idea that there can be different rules for different people in different situations. But this verse of the Quran isn't a command or a rule that Allah might need to change later. It's a description of human nature. This verse is part of Allah's eternal Quran. It's Allah's eternal speech. Allah revealed it to Muhammad. Muslims recited it as the Quran, but they couldn't remember it accurately. So Allah supposedly abrogated it. But why would Allah abrogate this verse? Again, it's not a command that might need to change. It's a statement about human greed. According to Muslims like Sajid, there's an important lesson in this verse. Sajid is still quoting this verse to Muslims today. Human nature hasn't changed. The lesson hasn't changed. So why did Allah abrogate this verse? Isn't it obvious that Muslims just didn't remember it very well? And that whenever they couldn't remember something very well, they simply justified their laziness by saying, Allah made me do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah.